Hello and welcome to the Sally Tomato YouTube channel. Here we enjoy bringing you tutorials that share knowledge and inspiration and we're going to take a little step back in time. This pattern for today's tutorial is Phileas. It is a very versatile tote. It has zipper closure, interior pockets, a kind of discreet exterior pocket. Our Phileas tote pattern can carry its own accessory bag. That would be the fog, one of our mini patterns. So join me and let's make this versatile tote. This tote bag has a concealed top closure, exterior slip pocket, strap connectors that double as belt loops, interior slip and zipper pockets. I'll also show you strap and handle options for even more versatility. Be sure to purchase the pattern before beginning the project. The pattern and supplies can be purchased on our website or request them at your local quilt shop. It's always great to support those independent local retailers. I'm sure you're ready to get started. Remember, you can always pause the video as we go along. That way we're sewing at your pace. So I'm going to go get my fabrics all cut out, get a little prep work done that I can show you, and I'll see you at the work table. Before beginning, review the materials and supplies section on the back of the pattern, which also includes a list of helpful notions. The Phileas tote can be carried by handles, worn crossbody or over the shoulder, and accommodates a belt as an extra accessory. Pack your daily essentials inside this bag's roomy interior and you're ready for a day of travel. This pattern was inspired by the literary character Phileas Fogg of Around the World in 80 Days. So even if we can only travel back in time in our minds, we can certainly be ready to travel any time in our everyday life with the tote bag Phileas. Follow your pattern for cutting all the pattern pieces. You may find it helpful to label them as you cut them out by marking the name of each piece on the wrong side with a removable pen or chalk. Or simply download and print the free pattern piece labels sheet on our site. I've used the little labels to note all my pattern pieces. Our first step is to fuse interfacing to the coordinating pieces, so go ahead and do that. I am using our Turtle Tex fabric for the lining. It's all coated on the wrong side, so it is going to act just like it's been interfaced. It'll look a little different from yours perhaps, but it's a great option for lining. To prepare the base, center the stabilizer piece against the wrong side of the contrast base piece. Be sure to use basting spray or basting tape to hold the layers together and then top stitch a quarter inch from the stabilizer edges to hold the layers together just like you see on my piece here. Then with right sides up, align all the edges of each main fabric piece A, that's the exterior front and back, over one foam piece A. You'll again use basting spray or sewing clips to hold the layers together while sewing and you'll baste a quarter inch from the bottom and side edges. You do not need to baste across the top edge because we're going to do a little shaping. Repeat for the contrast piece E, that's your base, and the foam piece, aligning and basting all the edges. Position the top edge shaping template that's found in your pattern centered and aligned to the top edge of your main fabric piece A. I do find it helps to mark center first and then place the template. You'll trace the outer edge of the template, flipping it so that you have the equal curve on both sides of center. At the machine, baste a quarter inch in from the traced line. Then you'll cut along the marked line to shape the top edge. Take some time to trim the foam from all the seam allowances that will reduce your bulk, but be careful to not cut through the stitches. Then you'll repeat the same shaping steps on the remaining piece A in your main fabric, 
but also repeat the shaping on your lining pieces A for the interior panels. Let's move on to make and attach the exterior slip pocket. First you're going to mark in from both top corners of your main piece B, that's your exterior slip pocket. Draw angled line from the mark to the adjacent bottom corner, just like I've done on the second edge of my pocket piece. You'll cut along the marked lines to shape your piece B and then repeat the same steps for the lining piece B, just like I've done here. With right sides together, position the exterior pocket piece over the lining pocket piece and then you'll align all the edges. Sew along the top edge with 3 8 inch seam allowance, just like I've done here. Then you're going to fold both pieces wrong sides together, rolling the main fabric slightly so the lining won't show. Align the raw side edges and press the seam. I'm going to finger press the seam because I have the coated lining fabric. And it's okay if the lining peeks out at the bottom You'll top stitch a quarter inch from the seam and then you can trim the excess lining even with the main fabric. With right sides up, center the pocket on the main piece A. This will be just one main piece and it's going to become the back panel. Align the bottom raw edges of all the layers. Then you're going to follow the pattern to fold a pleat positioned in from each bottom corner of the pocket. You want to check that the side edges of your pocket are straight and certainly adjust the depth of the pleats if needed. Then you're going to baste the sides and the bottom edge of the pocket to the main panel just like I've done here and we can move on to preparing and attaching the strap connectors. Top stitch both long edges of your contrast piece C, those are your strap connectors, if you're using contrast fabric. I'm going to be using woven webbing so I'm going to skip this step and go right into our next step. Thread piece C I have woven webbing, but you may have contrast, onto a D-ring. And then turn the underside of PC, so wrong sides are together, and refer to your pattern for the measurements of how much to turn under. And then you're going to top stitch from the, a little ways in from the fold, encasing the hardware, just like I've done here. Now, on the right side of PC, you're going to mark two vertical lines. These are going to be used in the next step and measure from the short raw end. You'll repeat these steps for your remaining pieces C and the remaining three D rings. On the right side, mark a long vertical line that's measured in from the left edge of your piece A. The pattern indicates the front. I'm using the back with the pocket showing you'll repeat marking a second line in from the right edge. So you'll have two long vertical marked lines on your main piece A. Now with right sides up, place one of your piece C, that's your strap connector, on the right side of your main piece A. Aligning the left edge of the strap connector along the left marked line. And then you're going to pay attention to the two markings that are on the strap connector. I'm going to pin the lower part of my strap connector in place first and then just shift the upper end of the strap connector down just a little bit and follow your pattern measurements to give just a little bit of space. This is going to allow the strap connector to become a belt loop. And you might try angle trimming the strap connector corners that are turned under just to help reduce the bulk for the top stitching step. Now top stitch on the marked lines and the previous top stitching. And then you'll top stitch the long edges. I'm actually starting 
with the long edges first. That way I know I have the majority of the strap connector actually secured and stitch with an eighth inch allowance along the long edges of your strap connector. And then I'm going to go back and top stitch near the hardware following my marked lines and the previous top stitching and again along the edges. You're going to leave that section between the two marked lines on your strap connector unstitched. That way it acts as a belt loop. Leave the space between the two lower marks unstitched as a belt casing or a belt loop. And another option is to top stitch an X within the top box or upper stitched box for reinforcement. Repeat the steps to attach the remaining pieces C, the strap connectors, to the remaining piece A exterior. That will be the back. One option to think about is adding a handmade label centered just down from the top edge of your piece A front that's without the slip pocket. All right, let's move on and prepare and attach the strap connectors B. These are the longer strap connectors. You'll prepare your contrast piece D strap connectors the same as you did for the piece C earlier. I'm using woven webbing, so I'm just going to go ahead to the next step and get the D rings attached and top stitched, and then also use the same markings to mark on the strap connectors themselves that you did before. And on the wrong side of our remaining pieces A, that's the front and back, be sure to mark center along the bottom edge and then also take a minute to mark the center along each edge of your contrast piece E, that's your base, and mark on the wrong side of these pieces. Then we'll move on to align right sides together matching the side and bottom edges of your pieces A. Just sew one side together with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. And then gently press that seam open. With right sides up, center one piece D, that's the strap connector, over a side seam aligning the bottom edges and then hold the strap in place using pins, sewing clips, even basting tape will help. Then you're going to top stitch on the marked lines and the previous top stitching as well as the long edges of piece D. Remember to leave the space between the two lower marks on your strap connector unstitched as the belt loop or belt casing. You're certainly welcome to top stitch an X within the top rectangular box for extra reinforcement if you'd like. Then you're going to repeat the steps to sew the opposite side seam together as well as attaching the remaining piece D strap connector. Be sure you take your time when attaching the remaining strap connector. You may find it easier to turn the tote bag inside out just as I've done and then rearrange the tote so you can stitch the areas of the strap connector. So just take your time on this step. Okay, let's begin assembly of the exterior. With right sides together, match the bottom center mark of your main front with the center mark on the long edge of your piece E, that's your base, aligning the raw edges. You're then going to sew together this edge with a 3 8 inch seam allowance, starting and stopping 3 8 of an inch in from the short ends of the base. At the beginning and end of the seam, cut a vertical line up to the last stitch and this would be on the tote exterior layer. You don't need to cut into the base. Mm -hmm. 
Then press piece E away from the front, covering the seam allowance. Repeat the steps to attach the opposite long side of piece E, that's the base, to the remaining panel of your tote. You may find it helpful to turn the tote wrong side out so it's easier to stitch those seams. And if you haven't already, you can turn the tote wrong side out. With right sides together, match each side seam with the center short edge of the base. You'll sew together this shorter seam with a 3 8 inch allowance and a quarter inch seam allowance to create the boxed corners. The extra row of stitching is great for reinforcement. And be sure to remember to backstitch at these seams. All right, ready to attach the zipper pocket? First, on one lining piece A, you'll mark two horizontal lines measured up from the bottom edge. Refer to your pattern for those dimensions. And then you'll also mark vertical lines in from each side. So again, the dimension or the measurement that you need is listed in your pattern to measure in from each side of the fabric piece A. These lines are creating a zipper placement box that you're going to cut out. All right, and then to attach the zipper pocket, follow your pattern instructions with illustrations. You can also visit our YouTube channel to view the Saatchi Bag online class for a very helpful tutorial. Just use the respective pattern pieces and measurements following the Phileas pattern. There we go, the zipper pocket is finished. Let's set that aside for a little bit and we'll go ahead and make and attach the slip pocket. You're going to use the remaining lining piece A and your lining piece I, that will be the interior slip pocket piece. And be sure to follow your pattern for all the step-by-step -step instructions, but also be sure to check out our YouTube channel Jess has a great tutorial in the bag making techniques area on our channel of how to assemble an interior slip pocket. Another step is finished. Let's move on to prepare the recessed zipper following the pattern instructions. You can also view the Miranda online class tutorial on our YouTube channel for additional visual steps to help you through the process. Now that the recessed zipper is assembled, we're ready to attach it to the lining panels A. Those are the panels with the pockets already in. And again, the Miranda online class tutorial is going to be a helpful visual aid. When the recessed zipper is attached, we can complete the lining. Be sure to mark the center on the lower edge or bottom edge of your lining pieces front and back, and then also mark the center of each edge of the lining piece E, that will be the base of the lining. Then we're going to attach the lining piece E, the base, to the bottom edges of the lining front and back, following the same steps that we did to assemble the exterior tote, but this time we'll use a wider seam allowance. Then with right sides together, align the top and side edges of the lining front and back and begin sewing at the top edge with a 3 8 inch seam allowance and then gradually increase that seam allowance. Using the wider seam allowance that's indicated in the pattern is going to create a slightly smaller lining which is going to fit very neatly inside your tote. Then we'll create the boxed corners following the same steps as for the exterior tote, but this time using the wider seam allowances. Then you can trim the seam allowances down to about a quarter inch wide and press the seams open if you can. I'm going to skip pressing my lining because my lining is coated fabric. Then turn the lining right side out. We're ready to assemble the tote. Open the recessed zipper completely, then with right sides together, insert the lining into the exterior, 
aligning the top raw edges and the side seams, securing that top edge with sewing clips. As you're clipping or pinning those top edges, make sure that the strap connector ends and the hardware are down inside the tote. You're going to go to the sewing machine and sew around the top edge with a quarter inch seam allowance. And it's turning the tote right side out through the opening in the zipper pocket. Smooth down the lining into the tote and then roll the lining along the top edge to the inside, pressing with your fingers. Hold the edges in place with sewing clips and then top stitch the top edge with a quarter inch allowance. Be sure to hold the hardware and the strap connector ends out of the way. Now simply turn the raw edges of the opening in the zipper pocket to the wrong side so the folds are even and then top stitch the bottom edge of the pocket closed with an eighth inch allowance. All right, we are now ready for the handles. I've actually gone ahead and made my handles following the pattern but I would really recommend checking out Jess's tutorial for the Molly online class. She goes through step-by-step step everything you need to help you get your handles created. So take a break, get those handles done, and I'll see you right back here. Be sure to use the swivel hook hardware for the handles for the Phileas tote. Go ahead and make the adjustable strap following your pattern instructions and also check out Jess's tutorial on how to make a crossbody strap on our YouTube channel. I'm actually going to use woven webbing. So I have cut my adjustable strap following the cutting instructions for piece F. So let's get our strap fabric, whether it's the contrast fabric or the woven webbing and let's go ahead and attach the hardware and finish the adjustable strap. Now for the accessory belt. This belt is perfect to hold a small bag such as our fog which is a belt bag for a truly complete travel tote ensemble combining Phileas and Fog. Now center and fuse the interfacing piece P on the wrong side of the contrast piece P, that's your buckle connector, and then also center and fuse the interfacing piece Q to the wrong side of the contrast piece Q. That's going to be your belt hole end. And I found it helpful to trim about an eighth inch from the outer edges of the interfacing first to keep those raw edges from being visible between the contrast piece layers. In order to prevent the raw ends of the woven webbing, that would be your piece T belt from unraveling, you can certainly melt each end of the webbing by lightly touching it with a lighter or a candle as I'm using. And if your webbing is cotton or you're not comfortable with melting the raw ends, sew over each raw end with a wide zigzag stitch multiple times. On the right side of piece P, that's the buckle connector, mark a vertical line in from each short end using a removable pen or chalk. Then at the machine, we're going to top stitch with an eighth inch allowance along both those long sides of the buckle connector, beginning and ending at those marked vertical lines. Also, while you're at the machine, top stitch an eighth inch from the small cutout opening in the center of your buckle connector. Now let's move on and on the wrong side of the buckle connector, mark in from one end, one short end, and then 
you're going to align one raw end of your piece T, that's your webbing belt, on the wrong side of the connector along that marked line. And if you plan to add rivets to the buckle connector after it's completed, cut a small rectangle of sewn foam or stabilizer and place that small piece of foam or stabilizer at the end of the webbing. This is going to help support the rivets. Now thread the buckle connector over the buckle hardware and fold the connector in half, wrong sides together, aligning the short ends and the side edges. You're going to be sandwiching your belt webbing or the woven webbing between the layers. Then hold all those layers in place with basting tape or a little bit of basting glue. And now at the sewing machine, top stitch an eighth inch from the raw edges and along the marked line to form a stitched box. I find that a very narrow foot helps stitching close to the hardware. After top stitching, if you'd like, you can certainly add rivets or even add additional top stitching with an X inside that box area of your previous stitching. And be sure to visit youtube.com backslash Sally Tomato for a video tutorial on how to install rivets. And let's get that other end of the belt finished. Let's attach the belt hole strap. On the wrong side, that would be the interfacing side, mark in from the straight end of the contrast piece belt hole end, that would be piece Q. Align the remaining raw end of piece T, that's your belt, on the wrong side of the piece Q, that's the belt hole end. And if you'd like to add rivets at the belt end, be sure to cut a small piece of sew in foam or stabilizer and place that at the end of the webbing, that's your belt, to help support the rivets. Next, position the remaining piece Q on top with wrong sides together, aligning all the edges and sandwiching the belt between the layers. Then you go to your machine and top stitch an eighth inch from all the edges. And if you'd like, you, it is an option, you can certainly stitch across the short straight end of piece Q again with a 3 8 inch allowance for added security. And especially if you're not adding rivets. The next step is really fast and I'm using my pattern piece as a guide. You can mark and punch the holes following the pattern for piece Q, and then if you'd like, install your rivets. One last finishing touch is to make a tassel using contrast piece U. Be sure to visit our YouTube channel for a video tutorial on how to make a tassel using the tassel cap hardware. And now let's put all these pieces together and welcome Phileas. I hope you enjoy using your new tote bag, even if we can only dream about traveling back in time. I'm sure you're going to stay organized when you use the Phileas tote. If you have any further questions, please leave a comment below and we'll do our best to answer them. We encourage you to share photos of your finished project using hashtag Sally Tomato and hashtag Phileas Tote Pattern on social media. If you found this tutorial helpful, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. That way you'll always know when a new video is here. Thanks so much for watching and sewing with me today. Until our next sewing adventure, have a great making day.